Good morning. Welcome to Planet Mojo. I'm on a little walk about in our north a lot. Right now I'm looking at one of the holes where the trees are going to go. If you've seen the earlier videos, I drilled these out with the auger and amended the soil down deep and then filled them most of the way back in. Uh, I left a little bit open at the top so they would collect water and wash the nutrients and gypsum down deeper into the soil. But what I'm more interested in is all this new grass. Um, because this was dug out, you can tell uh, how good the new seeding is going. You can actually see it all through, all through here as well. We planted a, uh, well, a quality seed, a quality grass seed, all along the edge here and in this part right here. And then we put, um, and then we seeded this whole field with a kind of a pasture seed. It's not a real good pasture seed, but it's a cheap pasture seed. And any pasture seed is better than none. Because if you don't seed it, whatever it wants to grow is going to grow. You can see all along the edge here, this had such thick brambles and other stuff growing here that there was no grass at all and now there's pretty heavy grass growing along here which is great so come spring this uh, new grass that we planted will already have an, an established root system so it'll grow really good next year same thing in here this was actually done earlier as well some of this stuff was seeded a couple times. So we got a whole lot of broadleaf weeds. This was a trail. We had cut a trail here. I did that Husqvarna versus DR trimmer video when we cut this trail or when I cut this trail. So that was done a good deal before this was cut. So the, uh, invasive stuff like this burdock and I don't know this could be garlic mustard right here no but the more invasive stuff you know has taken hold along this trail but what we're gonna do is spray this whole thing with 2,4-D first thing next year we're gonna cut it uh, one more time at the end of the year as late as we can and first thing in the spring as soon as this starts getting up there we're going to get in here and cut this and then we're going to spray it with 240 after that so that should knock a lot of the garbage down yeah there's areas where there's just really nice grass in here this is older grass. Um, it could could be prairie grass. I really don't know what it is. It's just whatever was growing here. Um, I doubt that any of this is like foxtail or anything. Most of the foxtail has died off or is really yellow. Some of it might be like this is pretty yellow here, but we'll find out. You could see the stuff we seeded into there is coming up around it so who knows what grass will win the fight here but in the end it will be grass and we can graze the horses over here hopefully i can turn this into oak savanna as well once we get the other pastures done that should be enough for the horses yeah, got a lot of grass growing up there as well. Awesome. The only thing that really needs to be done in 
this pasture by the end of the year is get it cut and hopefully find our lot line. We, we know this one where the string is. I, you probably can't see the string, but we set this string up earlier and I walked into the woods along this line and there is no there is no markers in there that I could find. I'm going to do it again right now, but we couldn't find any markers. So we'll have to either find an app to help us locate the corner back in here or have have this surveyed, which I would rather not do because it's expensive. But this field is looking really nice. This looked like crap before. Oh, also up here by the well where it's sunken in, we need to get some dirt added up there and get it smoothed off up there. There's, you know, two pits. There's one by where our curb stop comes out and there's one where the wellhead is. Both of those need filling in. And there's areas of this field that really need to be tilled up and smoothed out. We were we had a farmer that was supposed to come and give us a bid on that, but he never showed up. We'll have to give him a call again. All right, I'm going to walk in there and see if I can find that corner. Well, I got down to this part. The last time I came through here on the border walk, I think I was right about that area right there. And I said, there's no way I'm going to cross that ravine looking for the corner. But right here, I have found part of the tag. It kind of sucks when you find them on the ground like this because you don't know what it came off of. It likely did not come off of this because this is buckthorn and it's, it's fairly young. It most likely came off of this here, but close enough. They're, they're usually pretty damn close to where uh, they should be. That is not the corner though, but that gives me a reference I walked straight in and that being here means that the corner is likely down in this ravine so I'm gonna see if I can spot it you know it should be a stick that's what uh, oh, there's a regular puff ball instead of a giant one. Yeah, if if the surveyor, I think her name was Jennifer. Oh, there's a there's a flag right there. Oh, damn it. Now I have to go down there. I think I'm going to go down this little cut right here. There's there's a flag halfway down the side of the ravine here so the other one's right there following that line I'm going towards I believe that's an elm right there so somewhere between this and that elm or behind it I should find remnants of the corner or it might be still stuck in the ground let me go look Okay, this is kind of hard to find from down here. Oh, my stick's all rotten. It's been here for a while. So, it's still tied around its stick. I don't know what it was on. This is, again, an invasive species. This is, uh, oh, what is that, honeysuckle. an Asian import. 
which will need to be cut out of here. So between this, I did my siding from up there and that elm is where it is. So it, it could be, if it was right in the bottom, then it's gone. We've had so much rain around here that it would have washed away. I, I can't see a surveyor putting a stake right in the bottom of a ravine like this. Usually they would put it on a, a small overhanging branch or something. But it could be that there was just nothing in the area right where the corner is. There should be a metal pin in the corner though, I believe. I'll have to go look at the map. It'll say on the map what what's there. I believe they put three-quarter inch iron rods, which is generally just rebar. Okay, I'm going to scout around and see if I can find it. Yeah, you can see how much this is washed. Push these rocks up all over here. This is very close to the end of the ravine. It's probably, oh, 60 feet, 70 feet that way, 100 feet maybe. So this doesn't get a huge amount of water like it does further down, but if there was a, a stick in the ground here, good chance it's gone. So I'm going to head over here. It, it'd be cool if it's on the other side, up on the hill up there. That would expand our property quite a bit more than I thought. Well, let me head over there. I don't see any sign of a stake or any flags over here. The metal pin... They're, they're usually like flush with the ground or even under the ground. So I would have to come over with a metal detector to look for that. The place is just overgrown with buckthorn and other invasive species. So it's, it's pretty crappy over here. I'm not sure what kind of trees are all here. There's a few hickories, but most of it is... Uh, like big tooth aspen and other weed trees. This was all this was all grazing land, not all that long ago. So um, there is a couple big trees down that way, but I do believe those are on the neighbor's land. Ah. Uh, there it is. Well, yep, this is it. You can see it was uh, tied onto a, a uh, rectangular stake. I do not see the stake. So I don't know how far this came from its original spot. That's weird that it we just have this and little remnants of it but they're all in the same spot there's another one over here is it this that's pretty flat i don't know there's one two three four pieces yeah maybe the stick just rotted out and that fell off because this looks like the stick right here. These, this little jumble of pieces in it, it's likely it washed downhill just a bit. So yeah, as one of the pieces was right here, one there and one there. Okay, so I found the corner. Not much use over here. The land would run straight that way so it would cross this ravine again right up here but at least i knowing where the corner is i can walk i believe this lot line goes due north 
I can see if we own the crossing up there. There's a, a crossing in the ravine up there, and it would be nice if we owned that. But anyways, success. I wasn't even out to do this today. I was just assessing that field, and bada-bing, bada-boom. And I don't have any survey tape with me. Otherwise, I would throw some on this tree, but I'm going to go get a stake and just put it in this corner. Now we can come in here with the metal detector and just search this area and see if we can find a pin. Hopefully, on the survey map, it'll say that there's a three-quarter inch iron pin here. If not, we, we know pretty much that this is the corner right here. I mean, some of our lot lines are off by five, six feet. Some of the old ones, you know, the farmer would just do line of sight and build a fence. And after, uh, I think it's 11 years, it's, it's pretty much yours if you build a fence. So that's called adverse possession. So I'm trying to get my bearings here so I can walk back to this. We got a, a fair size hickory right here, pignut hickory. And we have this, this small wash here and a small wash on the other side. So it's just north of two small washes. That's pretty awesome. All right, I'm going to head out to that field and wrap this up. Okay, one last diversion. There's a few good sized trees right here and they are all on our land. So I'm gonna take a quick look at those on my way up to the field. Well, here's an interesting find. Not unexpected though. Uh, some of these ravines, the farmers would just dump all their garbage in them. Um, used them as a dump. There's one off that way, just straight through the field there on the neighbor's property that has vehicles and just tons of stuff in it. But this, you know, from the bark, it looks like a white oak. But I really can't see any leaves. I don't know, it could be, it could be dead. But that one over there Oh, hard to tell. That looks like a white oak as well, but let me get a little closer. And here's another find. I don't know when they quit making its aluminum. It hasn't rusted, but it's got the old style flip top. It's hams. So I'm going to take that with me, but not right now. I'll come back for it. It's just interesting, and it's garbage. I'll set that up here. But this one looks like a white oak. Nice little rock ledge right here. Cool right there. Um, in the springtime, these pools right here are full of tadpoles. The uh, tree frogs and toads and all that come out and and mate and have uh, have their babies in these pools. Some nice rock outcroppings. There's a big rock right there. It's a beautiful area. There's that big tree. But I think I spotted some other garbage. Yeah, it's just buried, buried under that rock. Some metal strapping. Yeah, it's pretty nice down here. Yeah, I'll have to go up there and see where the line crosses, but I believe it's it's right over here but this big monster is, is definitely on our land. So 
Let me see what the hell it is. It's got bark like a cottonwood, but that's what burr oak looks like as well. But I do believe that's a cottonwood. <laughs> yeah, it's really wet down here after all the rains we've been having. But look at that gnarly old rock right there with all the holes going in it. It's pretty awesome down here. Another interesting thing, not sure how well you can see this, but I don't know, that's probably four inches around. That's a grapevine that comes up around and goes up and then up into that tree there. But I need to use it to get the hell out of this ravine. <laughs> the, top, the top is right there and this uh, clay is as slick as snot, so I better get out of here. Okay, I'm at the base of this monster. That's a big tree. It was real hard to tell what the hell it is because it has this elm growing up through it. And then it has some like hickories and a maple and other stuff. Like right here is a maple growing up into it. So it was hard to spot the leaves. So I had to come way the hell over here and you could see them. And it's still really hard to tell what the hell it is. But from, it is an oak, but from the leaves, it, it looks kind of like a white oak, but this bark is not white oak bark. So this, I don't know, it's possible this could be a burr oak. This is what the bark looks like, but you know, uh, looking at the leaves on the ground, they all look like a red oak. Like that. But are those coming from like that red oak right there? I don't know. So I'll have to come revisit this. But that is one hell of a, of a massive tree. And then there's another one right there that looks the same. So I, I really need to find out where our lot line comes through. If these are burr oaks, it would be a nice place to collect uh, acorns from. But I don't see acorns or anything else around here. A lot of these oaks only produce acorns, you know, every other year, every few years. They don't produce them every year. But one more thing about this is the scar right here. You can see like evenly placed scars. I'm guessing that was from a barbed wire fence. There's probably metal inside here. They just grow around them and then they have this funky looking bark for a good while. I'm gonna guess they had a fence stapled to this at one time, likely to keep the cattle out of the ravine. The fence probably just went along the edge of the ravine to keep cattle out because this area was grazed. There's a fence up along the edge of it, but they also had fences right along the ravine from older grazing. So that's my guess what that is. I will have to come back and try to ID this tree at a later date. Yeah, see, there's another one. That one's, that one's definitely a red oak. This one, I really can't tell. Well, that's awesome. I really got to find my lot line over there. But it should be fairly easy now. Now that I found that corner, all I have to do is walk due north. And I should be able to find some remnants of flags over there. Well, it might cross the ravine right here. Because I know it's on this side at some point. Awesome. Now I'm going to head up to that field. Okay. I was walking along the edge of the fence on the other side here. Looking for the logging road. I know there's a logging road that comes up from the bottom and goes into the field. But I did not see it anywhere. 
now I'm thinking it's on our new neighbor's land, the people who are building the house right there. So we'll make our own, no big deal. I had just wanted to come over here and see how the grass was doing, see, you know, if I had any washouts or anything like that. And all of a sudden I find the corner of the property. What an awesome find. So that'll wrap it up for this walkabout on the upper lot. If you like our videos, please subscribe. Click on the update icon if you want to be notified when we upload new videos. Uh, hit the like button and have yourself a great day.